Why getting and keeping a mining job is so brutal. Conversations about mining. Hi, Jess. How are you? Yeah, great, Andrew. How are you going? Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, today, I've got a question that we've had set in um, because a few people have experienced it. Why getting and keeping a mining job is so brutal. Um, so I just wanted to lead off with it. And the big thing from my perspective, having been in it for so long, is that when you go in green, so you've got no education behind you at all, you end up on the company's timeline. And this isn't having a shot at anybody. This It's not anybody's fault the way this works. It just is the way it is. When you're on the company's timeline, it's brutal, unfortunately. You have to um, get into their time frame. You have to do it all the way that they want it done. And unfortunately, the way that they do things has a very very high turnover when you go in green. So it's more than 50% people fail and it's just totally brutal. And there's a lot of factors that people can't control. And it's just the more you educate yourself before you go, the easier it becomes. I know you went in as a driller's offsider um, and that can be extremely brutal. I don't know if you've got anything you want to share about that. Yeah, look, I went and luckily I had a background in chefing and had been in a lot of pretty brutal kitchens. So um, I was used to being in a male dominated industry and I was used to people, you know, being loud and crude and rude and probably a bit abusive at times. Um, so I had a pretty thick skin, but for someone that has come from a background where they haven't experienced that, whether you're young or whether you've been in an office environment or something a bit more relaxed or a bit more kind of controlled by HR, um, which obviously there is HR on sites and there is HR within these companies, but a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff, you are still working with um, male, a lot of males and in a in a very hectic, stressful job, like it is full on, like you're under the pump from the minute you start work until the minute you leave. Um, you may not get lunch. You may not get morning tea or smoko. You may not even have time to drink water. You may just be literally running all day long and getting barked orders at. And people sometimes aren't very friendly. Um, it probably took me about three or four swings, which back then I was doing three and ones. So it was a good few months before the drillers I worked with and a lot of the boys that I worked with actually realised that I was going to work and could do the work. And then they slowly warmed up to me and I really enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. It was fun. I kind of took it as a challenge to be accepted and, and to do the job and prove that I could do it. And back then there wasn't a lot of women doing it. Yeah. Um, but it can be brutal physically, mentally, emotionally. You're away from home for long periods of time. You feel quite isolated, especially if it is a little bit clicky and people aren't super friendly to you off the bat. Um, and, yeah, I had, like, several offsiders come through the crew that I was working with um, that didn't last. I think one lasted one swing, another one lasted, like, 10 days. A lot of them, and that was men and women. That just didn't, it wasn't what they expected. They had no idea what they were walking into. Um, and I think that's where you really need to educate yourself on how the mind works and what you are walking into and what the job is going to look like day to day because it can be pretty full on, especially if you're in exploration. You could be out in a caravan with six other people, not getting great sleep, not getting great rest, and you just don't, yeah, it can be pretty full on and pretty confronting if you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, exactly. And um, from the underground perspective, they go through just as many people in the underground space. And you often, well, because we're in the middle of a boom, you don't get safety and training training you. They All they do is paperwork at the moment. You get a buddy to train you. And then, you know, like I tell people, you can be in the lap of the gods with how good the buddy is and how invested they are. And you've got to remember everybody working on the crew is used to people failing. And that's why it takes three or four swings to, for people to work, warm up to you because nobody wants to invest time into somebody that's not going to be there and two weeks time and so by knowing what's going on and being able to talk the language and knowing how it all works it just makes it easier for you to get into the crew um, because they'll start investing time into you straight away i got a response back and you can look on this on the warm of fame page about it so i think it's about halfway down a guy got a nippers job about 12 months ago and he, he jumped into the um, shift boss's ute he, he wrote this thing back to me saying you should have seen the look on the shift boss's face when i jumped into the ute and i knew what a jumbo was and what charge up was and what scaling was and you know what you know primary and secondary ventilation was and everything else that i needed to know um it was you know it was look a relief basically because you know you've that person's already invested i don't have to teach that we can get this person up and running really quickly um what i try to 
impress upon people is that when you go in green, so you don't know anything, you're on their timeline and you're on their structure and their timeline and their structure turns over more than 50% of those new starters. So if you want to give yourself every advantage possible in getting in and getting surviving the first six months, then you really got to educate yourself before you go to give yourself a fair shot. Otherwise, you know, you, I've seen, per, I get a lot of people in civil come across and think that their operating experience is going to help them in some way, shape or form. And if you can't get your head around how the mind works, you can be the best operator in the world. If you can't, if you need a babysitter and you can't be left alone, you don't have a job. It's as simple as that. And um, that's what a lot of people miss. Unfortunately, they, you know, you get a lot of trades people come through and they want to um, talk about, you know, how good a trades person they are and how good they're going to be able to do the job without realizing that they can't actually do the job if they need a babysitter to be standing beside them the whole time. They need to be able to be left alone to get on with it. And that means driving from point A to point B, you know, without killing yourself or killing anybody else and, you know, just getting on with it. And, you know, for that, you need to know how it all works. Yeah, we have that all the time uh, with people. But I'm a XYZ tradesman. I'm a boilermaker. I'm a fitter or I'm an mecha LV mechanic or a heavy-duty mechanic. Like, why can't I get a job? Why is no one taking me seriously? I'm a tradesman. And it's like, well, unfortunately, um, you don't have those. Yeah you, yeah, you don't know how the mine works. You don't know how the equipment works. And you may be an amazing tradesman. But if you can't go in there and walk the walk and talk the talk and actually know how your day is going to be, especially as a fitter, or, you know, or a boilie or something like that, you're going to be covered in mud head to toe, probably from 6am to 6pm or 6pm to 6am. It's, it's a dirty job. It's a hard job. You're working your ass off for those 12 hours. Um, and a lot of tradesmen go into the roles uh, not knowing that. And so the more education you can do and the more you can know about how it works, especially in underground, um, the better. Like I, I think now, like if I had have done my offsiding now, once I'd done your training, my life would have been so much easier and I would have been taken seriously a lot sooner. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's the whole thing. And um, you, you People just don't realize the amount of failure that they have with their new starters and how acceptable that failure is. It's ingrained yeah. in people that more than 50% fail. And that's why nobody, you know, you get off the bus or the plane or wherever, and you're really friendly with everybody and you might be met with total indifference. And that's yeah. just because nobody wants to invest in making a new friend that they're only going to be a friend for, for three or four days for. It's just, you know, it's almost like the crews protecting themselves. Yeah. And um, yeah, people just don't realize that there's that much failure involved. Yeah. So the more you can do to educate yourself and wrap your head around exactly what you're walking into, what you're flying into, um, Andrew's course is amazing. It's invaluable, really. Like you, you that that experience and that knowledge, and just knowing how that works and what a day is going to look like for you, especially if you're going underground, um, is amazing. And then the other side of it too is is how is life in camp going to be? You know, do you do you know about you know do you have cell phone reception there? Are you going to be able to talk to your friends and family while you're away? Is that a possibility? You know, what's the food like? What's you know, are you going to be eating by yourself? Like there's all these things. A lot of times now they do give you a buddy and you do have someone that generally looks after you. Um, but depending on what they're like, it may not be, you know, it, they may not be a great buddy. They may not want to invest time in someone, like Andrew said, that is going to leave. If, so you're, you have, if you're the sixth person that they've had to look after in the last yeah. two months, I mean, yeah. you know, hello, would you like to be doing something like that constantly? Yeah. And I think that's where you have to really, like, you have to have your goals clear about why you're going and what you want to achieve and how long you want to do it for so that if you do go in and those first couple of swings are really hard and are really isolating and you are struggling with it, that you have that goal set and you know exactly what you're working towards, whether it's money, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, whether it's stability or whether it's a career progression, you really have to have those goals set and have that clear and be clear on that so that you can get through those hard times in the first few weeks because it is going to be hard. Yeah, No matter yeah. who you are or where you've come from, it's going to be hard. <laughs> yeah, and you just got to be ready for it. Being prepared is, you know, it's, it's the five Ps, prior planning prevents piss poor performance. That's the six yeah. P's actually. Um, but yeah, you just got to be ready for it. And, you know, when people are ready for it, that's when they have really good success. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Excellent. So thanks for the question. And if you've got any more questions um, that you'd like us to answer, please send them through. And if you can share the video around and like and subscribe the channel. Thanks. Thank you.